नमस्ती अतिराजाय विवेकानंद सूर सचित सुख स्वरूपाय स्वामी ने तापहारी ने रिवियर्ड स्वामी चेतनानंद जी महाराज मिनिस्टर इन चार्ज ऑफ वेदांत सोसाइटी ऑफ सेंट लुइस इन यूएसए स्वामी पूर्णात्मानंद जी अध्यक्ष ऑफ रामकृष्ण मठ एट ढाका इन बांग्लादेश स्वामी सर्वप्रियानंद जी मिनिस्टर इन चार्ज ऑफ वेदांत सोसाइटी ऑफ निव यर्क यूएसए स्वामी सिद्धेशानंद जी अध्यक्ष ऑफ रामकृष्ण मठ कथामृत भवन इन कलकता रिस्पेक्टेड मंगस एंड बिलावेड ब्रह्मचारिन एंड मोस्ट इम्पर्टेंटली डियर एंड रेसपेक्टेड प्रफेसर दीपक गुप्त ग्रेट ग्रैंड सन अफ एम द रेकर्डर अफ दि गसपेल अफ श्री रामकृष्ण एंड भेरि रेसपेक्टेड डिवोटिज एडभर एंड फ्रेंड्स हू आर व्वाचिंग दिस वेबिनार टूडे प्लीज अलाउ मी टू बिगिन बै थैंकिंग स्वामी सिद्धेशानंद जी दि अध्यक्ष ऑफ कथामृत भवन फॉर इनवाइटिंग मी टू दिस वर्चुअल कन्वेंशन इन हुईच डिवोटीज फ्रॉम ऑल अराउंड द ग्लोब हैव टेकन पार्ट इट्स ऑलवेज अ प्लेजर टू एड्रेस एन ऑगस्ट वर्चुअल ऑडियंस लाइक योर्स द टॉपिक चोजन फॉर मी to present in this virtual function is quote and quote i am a voice without a form which is a valuable quote from shami vivekananda about himself shami vivekananda himself said that he would like to come out of this cage of flesh and blood and scattered the spirit all over the world he would go on inspiring men and women he also said that he would go on doing this as long as a single individual in this world has not realized that he or she was a brahman he even said he would not seek salvation as long as single being in this country meaning thereby india remains stirred he said bani tumi bina pani kanthe mor which means you are in my voice and mother saraswati speaks through my words today the world knows and admires sami vivekananda in different roles a prophet poet patriot organizer orator by divine right awakener of souls and so on even his closest disciples saw him in their own light In the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, Master Mahasaya described him as the bubble that had risen up in the ocean of Satchidananda and assumed a human body to propagate the message of Sri Ramakrishna. Sister Christine eloquently wrote, quoted. He was not of this world. He was a radiant being who had descended from another, a higher sphere, for a definite purpose. Unquote. To some, he was the embodiment of power. To others, he was love personified. Some bowed down and worshipped him as God. 
and he was the warrior monk to some others. But who is really Swami Vivekananda? Probably only his guru Sri Ramakrishna knows, or else he himself told, had there been another Vivekananda, he could have understood what this Vivekananda has done. In the beginning of 1894, after the great success of his lectures in America, Swamiji had written to Swami Ramakrishna Nandaji. Again I quote, I am an instrument and he is the operator. Through this instrument he is rousing the religious instinct in thousands of hearts in this far off country. Thousands of men and women here love and revere me. He makes the dumb eloquent and makes the lame cross mountains. I am amazed at his grace. Whichever country I visit, it's an uproar. They have named me the cyclonic Hindu. Remember, it is his will. I am a voice without a form. How was that formless power? Miss Laura Glenn, later known as Sister Devomata, who heard him in New York, gave an account. She said, he began to speak, and memory, time, place and people all melted away. Nothing was left but a voice ringing through the void. It was as if a gate had swung open and I had passed out on a road leading to the limitless attainment. The end of it was not visible, but the promise of what it would be shown through the thought and flashed through the personality of the one who gave it. He stood there, prophet of infinitude. Sister Nibedita, on hearing Samiji for the first time in London, wrote, quote and unquote, the feeling that the great music wakes in us, grows and depends with its reputation. Sister Christine, who went to hear Swamiji in Detroit, Unitarian Church, wrote, One felt that one never knew what music was until one heard that marvelous voice. Sister Nibedita also recorded her unforgettable experience of Swamiji's lectures in New York. Ah, they are mistaken who say that a voice is nothing, that ideas are all. For this, in its rise and fall was the only possible music to the poetry of the words, making the whole hour a pause, retreat in the marketplace of life, as well as a song of praise in some dim cathedral ale. Miss A.C. Waldo, another disciple of Swamiji, who had recorded inspired talks, the teachings at Thousand Island Park, wrote of our experience. She wrote, the Swami didn't appear to address us directly, but rather seemed to be speaking to himself in words of fire, as he were. So intense were they, so eloquent and convincing, burning into the very hearts of his listeners, never to be forgotten. We listened in utter silence, almost holding our breath for fear of disturbing the current of his thoughts or losing one of those inspired words. A 19-year-old girl, an eyewitness to the incident of Swami Vivekananda facing Christian missionaries in Northampton town in USA recounted, I quote, 
the face with its inscrutable expression, the eyes so full of flashing light and whole emanation of power are beyond description. How could one expect a Hindu from a far off India to hold his own with this master, though he might be of his own learning? Was it that his words found an echo in my own longings? Or was it merely the magic of his personality? I can't tell. I only know that I felt triumphant with him. To me, that night, he personified power. Whatever success that he had achieved in life, Whatever that was good in him, he attributed it to his master. The power behind me is not Vivekananda, but he, the Lord, and he knows best, was his constant refrain. Samiji once confided to a brother monk that during his lecture tour in America, he sometimes received direct instruction from Sri Ramakrishna as to which places he should or shouldn't visit. Knowing this, we can be sure that he was being literal when he wrote on May 28, 1894 to Alasinga Perumal, I quote, I do not know when I am going back to India. It's better to leave everything in the hands of him who is at my back directing me." Unquote. And later he again writes, I am in his hands. I will go back to India when I get a command. Quote, unquote. In America, sometimes Swamiji would feel exhausted of the new ideas to be given on the next day's lecture due to his regular and extensive lectures. Then at night, a voice would replenish that void by continuously speaking on the topics of next day. That voice used to be so tangible and loud that once a gentleman staying in a room adjacent to Swamiji asked him in the morning that with whom he was speaking to at night. The voice was of none other than Sri Ramakrishna. And in the next day, Swamiji used to teach the audience with those ideas. Evidently, Swami Vivekananda was the voice of Sri Ramakrishna. This can be established from various incidents of their lives. Let's now have a look at those. Before their appearance in the moon and plain, in the sublime transcendental realm, Samiji, a meditating Rishi, a sage, foremost among the seven sages, Saptarshis, followed the voice of Sri Ramakrishna, who as a child told, I am going down to earth, won't you come with me? And the sage nodded in affirmation. It was in the year 1887 that Holy Mother Sri Devi, after a pilgrimage, went to Kamarpukur. One day she had a vision, Noreen standing under a people tree, and after some time he marched into the body of Sri Ramakrishna. She got surprised and asked Joginma to bow down and take the very dust of that particular place. Thus. The identity of Thakur and Samiji was revealed to Holy Mother. Later she asserted, quote, unquote, Noren is an instrument of Thakur. He has made him write all these things so that his disciples and devotees would carry out his work for the welfare of the world. Whatever Noren says is true, they will fructify in time. Swami Premanandaji, the strictest follower of traditional forms of rituals, was the priest of Sri Ramakrishna's temple and also the manager of Belur Mardin. 
Once at the time, Sri Sarat Chandra Chakraborty, a devoted disciple of Swamiji Maharaj, worshipped his guru's feet with the flowers arranged and kept ready for Sri Ramakrishna's worship. Swamiji said to his disciple, Well, your worship is finished, but Premananda will be in a rage at your sacrilegious act of worshipping my feet in the flower tray meant for Sri Ramakrishna's worship. Before his words were finished, Swami Premanandaji came there and Swamiji said to him, quote, See what a sacrilege he has committed. With the requisites of Sri Ramakrishna's worship, he has worshipped me. Swami Premanandaji smiling said, Well done. Are you and Sri Ramakrishna different? In reply to the letter of the Maharaja of Khetri in 1895, Swamiji wrote from America, One voice has spoken, whose echoes are rolling on and gathering strength every day. It was the medium of Swami Vivekananda, through which the voice of Sri Ramakrishna echoed. Swamiji declared unequivocally, while I am on earth, Sri Ramakrishna is working through me, have no doubt. One day at Kashipur, Sri Ramakrishna gave him the power accumulated by his own sadhana, remarking afterwards, quoted, O Narin, today I have given you my all and have become a fokir, a penniless beggar. By the force of the power transmitted by me, great things will be done by you. Only after that, you will go where you come from." Unquoted. Swamiji wrote to Swami Ramakrishna in 1895. Again, I quote, Know for certain that the work done by me is not the work of Vivekananda. It is his work the Lord's own work. If one governor general retires, another is sure to be sent in his place by the emperor." Unquote. Gradually, his earthly form started limiting his all-expansive heart to reach out every corner of the world, to commune with every suffering man in any part of the world, in such a way that is beyond the grasp of ordinary man's understanding. He could do this with the formless entity of his ethereal spirit. Once a volcanic eruption took place near Fiji at the dead of night, which caused death and terrible suffering to countless people. Swamiji woke up suddenly from sleep at 2 a.m. as if in a jerk. Since he felt pain in his heart, he said to Swami Bhigyanarandaji, I was sleeping well, but suddenly I felt a sort of shock and woke up. I am sure there has been an accident somewhere in the world and that many people must have lost their lives. The year 2020 will be remembered by the humanity as a nightmare because of COVID-19. This has left in its trail a vast devastation, procession of corpses, crash in the financial market, hunger, unemployment, and so on. In a similar scenario, Ella Wheeler Wilcox, America's well-known poet, wrote about the impact of Vivekananda's words. I quote, it was that terrible year of financial disasters when banks failed and stocks went down like broken balloons and businessmen walked through the dark valleys of despair and the whole world seemed topsy-turvy. Sometimes, after sleepless nights of worry and anxiety, the man, Mr. Will Cox, as she referred to her husband in that way, would go with me to hear the Swami lecture 
and then he would come out in the winter gloom and walk down the streets smiling and say it is all right there is nothing to worry over and i would go back to my own duties and pleasures with the same uplifted sense of soul and enlarged vision unquote needless to say vivekananda was not an ordinary man but is that towering personality of immeasurable height still standing beside us he himself promised that he will not cease to inspire men towards the end of his worldly play we got the assurance of his ever present benign support again i quote it may be that i shall find it good to get outside of my body to cast it off like a disused garment but i shall not cease to work i shall inspire men everywhere until the world shall know that it is one with god unquote all morality and spiritual struggles are aimed at breaking down the false individuality the sense of separateness from the whole identify yourself with the ocean and not with the wave is the clarion call of vivekananda it's an invitation for everyone to transcend the limitations of their material trappings and stake their claim to their spiritual heritage don't be a tiny puny wave that may disintegrate at any moment that may be overpowered by a bigger wave at any moment renounce your limited name and form and own up your unlimited nature this is the message of shami vivekananda that comes out of the statement i am a voice without a form sister nivedita with her profound wisdom and spiritual insight inherited from her master shami vivekananda In 1906, wrote to Joseph I. MacLeod. I again quote: "You see, when we who understand Swamiji and remember him are dead, there will come a long period of obscurity and silence for the work that he did. It will seem to be forgotten until suddenly, in 150." or 200 years it will be found to have transformed the west now we can clearly feel that what nebedita had prophesied four years after swami ji's demise now seeing the light of the day truly that voice has not stopped working passing the momentary lull his ideas are rising up from under current flow to the visible stream that are gaining strength day by day the power of his thoughts has permeated the whole world and with the passage of time he is being increasingly acknowledged as one of the molders of the modern world it's bound to happen because a form is always destructible where is the formless is beyond creation and destruction it is eternal or may decay or grow according to the need of the time but the voice remains timeless limitless without form and naturally vivekananda was so right when he referred to himself as a voice without any form thank you so very much for being with us and giving a very very patient audience to be all the best to all of you wish you a very very happy 2021